It's 1911 and it's a really nice morning in Paris. Vincento Perugia, a handyman in the Louvre Museum Paris, opened a cupboard and let two shadow figures in. Together, they removed the glass from a painting, they wrapped the painting in the blanket and they carried it outside without being noticed. This painting that they just stole is probably the most famous painting in the world, La Gioconda or you may know it as the Mona Lisa. Hi, I'm Solanki. I'm an artist and I have been posting my paintings on Instagram for over two years and on YouTube for approximately eight to nine months. You might not know I'm also a true crime buff. So I decided to start this new series where I combine two of my favorite hobbies, true crime and painting. And in the first episode, I'm going to tell you the story of Mona Lisa and how it got famous just through a true crime when the painting got stolen while I myself attend to paint the Mona Lisa in my style. Let's see how this turns out and hope I take you for a ride. As you know, Mona Lisa was painted by the famous artist Leonardo da Vinci. What you might not know, who was the model for Mona Lisa? I always wondered who was Mona Lisa and it seems there are several theories behind it. The most popular one was Mona Lisa was the wife of a famous merchant, a Florentine merchant to be precise. And her name was Lisa del Gioconda. I'm probably getting all of the pronunciation wrong. I'm not Italian, so mm, please bear with me. However, Leonardo took a long time to paint this picture, approximately around 10 years, and he never gave the painting back to the Gioconda family. Mona Lisa was first sold uh, after Leonardo da Vinci's death and it was first bought by King Francis I and he did make it a little bit famous by showing it off to people but the painting was nowhere near as famous as it is now and it won't be for several more decades and after the French Revolution it was acquired by Napoleon and it was hung up in his bedroom for quite some time but after that it was acquired by the Louvre Museum of Paris where it still remains to this day However, something happened in between which made the painting the world famous painting that it is today and it holds the world record for the most sung painting, most mentioned painting and the most famous painting in the world. Before I get into that story, I do want to tell you the, the art masterpiece that Mona Lisa is. Leonardo da Vinci was famous for trying out different uh, painting techniques in his painting and he experimented with them and he actually tried a bunch of those techniques in Mona Lisa. If you see closely, you will see that the gradient in Mona Lisa's arms and her skin are seamless and sometimes it doesn't even feel like an oil painting, it is it's more real, it feels like a photograph and that has been achieved by a painting technique that Leonardo da Vinci practiced. At the same time, he had also played around with the background. He also developed a technique where the background is blurry, which is kind of like the DSLR effect that we all use and know nowadays. And he, he invented it while painting and he put the blurry background and an imaginary background, to be honest, uh, which was unknown and unheard of at those days. And uh, he painted Mona Lisa in front. Another really interesting bit that caught my attention is that Mona Lisa had been changed many times and Leonardo actually tried different jewelry in her hair and then probably realized she looks better plain and her famous smile was uh, the results of a lot of experimentation on Leonardo's part. If you see the smile closely, the famous Mona Lisa smile and if you look at it from directly, it doesn't seem like she's smiling. But if you look at from another angle, it looks like she is. And that's what makes Mona Lisa so magical. Uh, even though it is not such a great painting of its time, it, it was very normal. It was made in, in a similar fashion as a lot of the Virgin Mary paintings, uh, which was famous those times. It was not particularly any different from them. Now let me come to that famous incident that made Mona Lisa famous. Vincento Perugia was a handyman in Louvre Museum around 1900s. He was a believer since Leonardo da Vinci was an Italian painter. He was a believer that the painting of Mona Lisa actually belongs in Italy. However, it has been stolen by the French. 
he also had several twists with the law earlier he has been known to steal small things around there in the museum and outside so i don't know if i believe the first theory as much so he is the person who built the glass case around mona lisa uh, he was hired to build lot of the glass cases in the paintings in louvre and he was a person who built the glass case for mona lisa as well around that time since he used to work there he also had a key to all of the doors and in the museum on 1911 on the fateful day he actually got two of his friends and hid them in one of the security closets before the museum got closed and in the early hours of the morning he opened the closet three of them come out and they very carefully re uninstalled the glass of the painting took out mona lisa wrapped it in a blanket that they were carrying and the other two person probably hid we don't know about them so much what been sent to us he hid mona lisa under his shirt and he starts walking out then he starts fumbling with the door uh, and he wanted to get out a security guard actually heard and he came in and then he saw vincent and he knew that he was there we were like oh we were not able to open the door let me help you and he opened the door for him and vincent operigio walked out of the museum with the most famous painting in the world and that's how Mona Lisa got stolen. Now, on August twenty second, nineteen eleven, one day after Mona Lisa was stolen, so the painter Louis Bedard, he visited the museum, and he saw that the Mona Lisa is not there. There's a shape in the dust, but the painting is not there. However, he didn't think that he will mention it to the authorities because he thought maybe the painting has been taken down and getting cleaned and restored somewhere. So, not until a week has gone by, the people noticed that. Mona Lisa has been stolen. The police starts investigating, and the famous poet of that time, Guillaume Apollinaire, was arrested and was questioned. He actually implicated his friend Pablo Picasso. <laughs> This case is funnier than I thought, and Pablo Picasso was also questioned because he has been part of theft of another painting from Louvre some time back, and that's a story for another day. Well, there were questions. Clearly, they were not the culprits, so they were let go. The police didn't found any leads for the Mona Lisa for quite some time. That's because Vincenzo kept it in his home for two long years, and he did nothing about it. He didn't try to sell it, didn't do anything. But after a while, he started getting impatient, and he went to Florence and he tried to sell it off. And when the painting appraiser started appraising the painting, he realized this is not one of the cheap replicas that he sees every day this is a real deal and that's when okay let me keep it for the day and then i'll get back to you how much price i can give and he covertly alerted the police that's how vincento peraggio got caught after this incident millions started to flock to the louvre museum to see the big thing that got stolen however it won't be the last time that mona lisa would be part of a crime in 1956 a bolivian man named uko ngaza threw a rock at mona lisa in the museum he threw the rock so hard that it shattered the glass and it hit the painting directly and it actually damaged and chipped off the paint near mona lisa's left elbow And before that, two years back, there was another man who is unnamed at this point, who claimed to be in love with Mona Lisa, and he tried to cut out the painting with a razor blade. On 21st April 1974, Mona Lisa was taken to the Tokyo Museum for an event. However, a woman actually sprayed it with red paint to protest against disabled people access to that museum. and even that won't be the last time mona lisa is part of a crime on 2nd august 2009 a russian woman she was really angry that she didn't get french citizenship so she visited the louvre brought a tea cup as a souvenir came to mona lisa threw it against the painting's glass because she was angry and the most recent one actually happened last year when a male climate change activist disguised as a woman a old woman in a wheelchair came into the lower 
and threw cake towards Mona Lisa. There were also other incidents that were inspired by the Mona Lisa and I have to mention it as special mentions. In 1852, a famous portrait artist in France jumped from the fourth floor of the French capital. He claimed that he is so much in love with Mona Lisa and her smile, he can't leave and he committed suicide. I'm pretty sure with having some mental health issues but at that time unfortunately it was not a thing so and he took his life then in 1910 just one year before the painting got stolen and got famous a person actually approached Mona Lisa with a gun and shot himself because he was in love with her Mona Lisa have also been part of several speculations and theories and conspiracy theories including from Mona Lisa being pregnant to UFO and aliens in the backgrounds. Maybe that's a video for another time. However, Mona Lisa still continues to charm and impress people from all over the world. Some people are also let down because when they visit Mona Lisa, they say it's a smaller painting than they thought and it's a little less overwhelming than they thought it would be. But however, Mona Lisa still holds the Guinness World Record for insured painting of all time and it's probably the most famous and most expensive painting in the world. I end the story of Mona Lisa and let me know down in the comments below how you like this new format of the video. I am super excited because I love telling stories and I want to bring more and more of these videos for you guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these videos. And if you're also interested in art tutorials and art challenges, I do them too. See you guys next time. Goodbye.